Facebook Messenger gets encryption, kinda. Quantum computing gets a real life competitor from Google and Wendy's got hacked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for July 12, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, our privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, please do so. We have lots that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire and the link is in the show notes. Now first off, quantum computing for practical use cases still seems to be in the distant future and not quite yet a real world scenario where it could be used to break encryption techniques currently used to protect conversations and data online. But because smaller form factor quantum computers do exist for other reasons, and the NSA sought quantum computing as a part of an $80 million project, it kind of seems like a good idea to start researching new crypto in order to thwart potential vulnerabilities. So that is Google's thinking. With a blog post published on Thursday regarding experimenting with post-quantum cryptography, the study that could in the future find a cryptography technique that will stand strong against quantum computing hacking. So in Google's experiment, they will be mixing both the current elliptic curve key exchange algorithm with a post-quantum computing one to see if the latter can hold against hacks, both today and in the future. Now, if they find that it is breakable, a user would still be safe under the current elliptical curve algorithm used on Google Chrome. Google plans to discontinue this experiment in two years, after which they hope many findings will surface about their cryptography technique, which goes by the name of Ring Learning with Errors, or Ring LWE for short. According to Google software engineer Matt Braithwaite, which I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name, Quote, our aims with this experiment are to highlight an area of research that Google believes to be important and to gain real world experience with the larger data structures that post quantum algorithms will likely require. So it'll only be available through Chrome Canary, which is a testing platform of Chrome, and a user can tell by checking their security panel for CECPQ1 if they're one of the chosen few. Facebook just began rolling out its new encryption option for Facebook Messenger to its 900 million users, calling it Secret Conversations, but only a few can currently access it until later this year. The setting offers end-to-end -end encryption for its users using a protocol called Signal by Open Whisper System which is an open source encryption technique most notable for its use in other Facebook owned app called WhatsApp and Open Whispers own Signal text and calling app which we very much love here in the Hack5 warehouse. The biggest drawback to Facebook Messenger and encryption is that it's opt-in. Yes, yes everyone, you heard me right, it is opt-in. You will have to physically choose to enable this secure feature instead of it automatically being turned on. Another bummer is that it can only work with one device, so you will have to choose what device you want encryption to work on. Other devices won't have encryption turned on, nor will you be able to read encrypted conversations on them, which makes sense. Facebook also released a white paper on the technology in which they state, quote, Facebook will never have access to plain text messages unless one participant in a secret conversation voluntarily reports the conversation. Yeah, keep that in mind because you'll have to put trust in the hands of whomever you're talking to. Props to our friend Vis for pointing out that. Now with the cons also comes a major pro. People want encryption and companies are valuing that by giving us encryption. But by making encryption just sort of kind of available, sometimes on applications, sometimes not, sometimes on devices, sometimes not all devices, it uh, comes with some drawbacks to Messenger. Is it still worth it? Or d would you stick with another service like Signal? What are your thoughts on this one? I would really like to know. Do you eat at Wendy's often? I don't, but I know a lot of people that do. Well, you might end up getting a new credit card sent to you. At least 1,000 Wendy's locations fell prey to a malware attack on their point of sale systems that stole credit card data, including names, numbers, expiration dates, CVV, and service codes starting in late 2015. The breach was due to remote access for cash registers that a third party vendor had available whose credentials were compromised. So apparently somebody got usernames and passwords. 
Yeah, social engineering, folks. Wendy's is currently facing a class action lawsuit from at least one bank because of the six months it took for Wendy's to finally shut down the malware. You can find out if your location was compromised by visiting the link in our show notes. Before I go, I did want to mention, yes, we are very, very aware of Pokemon Go and its app permissions. We're following that story very closely. We'll put link in the show notes as far as that information goes, but I'm definitely playing it on my Marshmallow 6.0 Android phone. I can't help myself, it's Pokemon. Thanks again to all the fine people who are contributing to patreon.com slash threatwire. You brought this show back to life and you are the reason that we can keep bringing you news every single week. Any little bit helps us grow the show and in return, we will build an RSS for you and when we reach our next goal, we will bring on another episode per week. We are really looking forward to that. We might even feature your fur babies in an upcoming episode. We love seeing them, so of course, if you are at that level on the perks on Patreon, definitely send us pictures. We love seeing your fur babies. Now check out the perk levels on Patreon.com, and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and completely ad-free. And if you can't donate, hit the subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social networking media page and use the hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it and we will totally give you props. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Pro tip, turn off your beeping NAS before trying to record an episode of Threatwire in your studio. Urgh.